In this video, we will reveal how a home fan works. What parts does it have inside? And, how can you solve a problem if it breaks down or stops working? So, stay and watch this video. As we well know, a home fan is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy to move masses of air through the rotation of its blades and thus have a feeling of freshness in a room. These fans, apart from rotating their blades to move air, also oscillate from one side to the other. And, how do you do it? Let's explore what it has inside. If you have a fan similar to this one, then you can remove the case by removing the screw on the back, and also removing the pin by pulling up. In this way we can now remove the casing that covers the internal parts of the fan. Indeed, we have here a small electric motor which is the heart of the fan. This motor, upon receiving the electric current, rotates in shaft where the fan blades are attached to one of its ends. And the question is, how does the oscillating motion direct the airflow over a wider range? And well, the magic happens here behind the fan, in the gearbox. The motor shaft extends beyond the rear, where at the end it has a worm gear, which is coupled to a gear. At the bottom there is another gear that is connected to the crank, which we will detail in a few minutes. If the pin is not depressed, the motor shaft simply rotates the gear that is attached to the worm. On the other hand, if we press the pin, it allows all the gears to join together to enable side-to-side -side movement. But, to achieve this movement, not only a set of gears is enough, but a bar mechanism is required to achieve the reciprocating movement. All this is based on the principle of a four-bar crank oscillator mechanism. Where, the blue bar is the crank that makes a rotating movement and therefore makes the other bars make a side-to-side -side movement with the green bar fixed. This same mechanism is present in the fan. The bars are these. The green fixed bar is here and the crank bar is in this gear. The other two oscillator bars are here, one runs from one end of the motor to the gearbox and the other is the metal plate shown here, all of which together allow the side-to-side -side movement of the fan to be executed. Up to this point we have already seen how the rotating movement and the side-to-side -side movement of the fan are carried out. But we still need to see how the speed of the fan blades is controlled. Every fan has a speed selector which consists of buttons and push buttons that are connected to the electric motor. Generally, in this type of fans, five cables come out of the motor box, two of which are connected to a capacitor and the other three cables are connected to the fan speed selector. On the speed selector, we have four buttons, of which the three white buttons are for speed control and the remaining button is to turn off the fan. The cable connection for this selector is the phase cable that comes from the electrical network is connected to the corresponding terminal and from each terminal of the buttons they are connected to the three motor cables. On the other hand, the neutral cable that comes from the electrical network simply goes directly to the motor. Generally, on the back of the speed selector, it indicates with the letter L where the cable coming from the electrical network is connected and with numbers the terminals or terminals that must be connected to the motor. Let's explore a little how the gear selector works. When we press a speed button, the previous buttons are released to change the fan speed. By pressing the off button, it frees the other buttons from the speeds and does not stay stuck like the others. Let's see in more detail what it has inside. We can see a metal plate with slots just behind each button. At one end of the metal plate there is a small spring which allows this plate to move when it changes position. When you press a button, the plate slides down and then retracts, leaving the button hooked so that it cannot be released. If we press another button, the plate slides down again, releasing the previous button and remaining hooked. The buttons retract thanks to the spring they have. This way we can change the fan speeds. To turn off the fan, simply press the off button and release the other buttons. 
This button does not stay hooked since there is no notch in the plate slot that engages said button. Each button that stays engaged allows you to connect the line cable with one of the three cables that go to the motor. And it is because internally there is a metal sheet that communicates to all these buttons when they are hooked or pressed. So this is how the speed selector of a home fan works. Let's see an electrical connection diagram between all these components. Shown here is the motor with the five cables, the gear selector and the plug. In this case, the color of the cables that the motor comes with indicates the following. The blue wire is for the lowest speed, the white wire for medium speed, the red wire for high speed, the black wire for power neutral and the yellow wire for the capacitor or condenser. The connection would be like this. The capacitor must be connected between the yellow and black wire. From the plug's phase wire it is connected to the L terminal of the gear selector. From terminals 1, 2, and 3 it is connected to the three motor cables and finally from the neutral wire it is connected to the black motor cable. Usually a small thermal fuse is connected to the black wire, which protects the electric motor winding. In other fan models, the color of the cables may vary, therefore, the connection also changes. Be careful with that. A fan usually stops working or fails for three reasons, which we will detail below. If when you connect to the outlet or plug and press any power button, and it does not start or the engine sounds, then the speed selector may have broken. You can try the following. Check that the power cables leading to the fan are not broken. On the speed selector, jumper the power cable with any speed terminal, then connect the fan and check if it turns on. If so, then the speed selector is the one that would be bad and should be replaced or repaired. If the fault is still not resolved, then it could be that the thermal fuse is blown. This small device burns out due to excessive motor temperature or overloads. If your fan has not been maintained and has been exposed to dust or humidity, then some parts rust or expand, causing the motor to be stressed more and its temperature to increase. You can solve the problem by changing this fuse, but first you must maintain the fan because sometimes it is stuck or has some rusty parts and no lubricant. If when you connect to the outlet or plug and press any power button, and it does not turn on, but if you hear the motor ringing, then the possible fault must be in the starting capacitor. These fan motors require a capacitor or condenser to start and operate. If this breaks down, the fan may slow down or no longer rotate the shaft. To solve this problem, then you must change the capacitor, this must take into account that it is of the same capacitance and voltage and frequency values. In this case, it tells us that this capacitor is 3 microfarads with an error of plus or minus 5% and that it can be powered with up to 250 volts in alternating current with a frequency of between 50 and 60 Hz. Well friends, this would be all. If you liked the information, don't forget to like and share this video. See you later.